Hello, I'm François Durand. I'm the, the head of the hepatology unit in Hospital Beaujon. Hospital Beaujon is in Clichy, uh, France. It is uh, close to Paris and it is uh, affiliated to University uh, Paris uh, Diderot. It is a tertiary care center with about 500 uh, beds. And um, it's, uh, this hospital has, has a long history of uh, hepatology. Uh, many prestigious um, hepatologists and uh, investigators have been working or are still working in uh, Hospital Beaujon on, in the field of uh, hepatology. Jean-Pierre Benamou, who was the founder, uh, Serge Erlinger, Dominique Vallat, Patrick Marcelin, Didier Lebrec, uh, Dominique Pesser and uh, others. And all of them had a huge contribution in the academic production in the scientific field of uh, hepatology. And I'm very proud to be, uh, to follow their steps and uh, to try to, to continue what they initiated. Uh, we, beyond hepatology, we are working with, with experts in the field of uh, liver imaging, uh, Valérie Villegrain, liver pathology with uh, Pierre Bedossa and uh, Valérie Paradis, and of course, surgery, liver surgery. Uh, Jacques Belguiti launched uh, liver transplantation and uh, now is retired. And Olivier Soubran, who is uh, the current head of the uh, liver surgery unit, is an expert in um, uh, minimally invasive uh, surgery. Uh, our main topics are uh, liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma and other uh, liver malignancies, uh, viral hepatitis. We are a reference center for vascular diseases of the liver with uh, Dominique Vallat. Uh, other topics of, of, are, of course, NASH and uh, acute and chronic liver failure with uh, end-stage complications of end-stage liver uh, diseases, especially focusing on the interactions between uh, the kidney and uh, the, the liver and uh, circulation and, uh, and the liver, and uh, acute liver failure and, of course, liver transplantation. We are performing about 100 to 120 liver transplantation each year with a cohort of more than 1,000 uh, liver transplant patients. Uh, we have a strong history of uh, interactions between all uh, these uh, units, which is a key for education and uh, academic uh, production. Many uh, fellows have been working in our uh, unit and are now hepatologists uh, all around the world. And of course, all the fellows coming from any countries who want to, to train in hepatology are welcome in our hospital. So you are going to see a case uh, report which is presented by uh, Claire Francoz and Olivier Roux who are involved in the liver intensive care and uh, uh, liver transplantation, and Dominique Vallat, who was the previous head of the unit. Thank you. Dear colleagues, we are very happy to welcome you at this e-session of the ESL Grand Rounds, which will be devoted to the complications of cirrhosis. My name is Dominique Vallat. I am a physician and professor of hepatology at the liver unit in Hôpital Beaujon, Clichy, nearby Paris, in France. And with me from the liver unit are also Dr. Olivier Roux, who will be presenting uh, the case, the patient's case. He is uh, uh, our fellow chef de clinique. And to comment on the case of the patient, Dr. Claire Francoz, who is a praticien hospitalier, a consultant, at our liver units. And both are very specialized in intensive care unit for decompensated patients with liver disease and in liver transplantation. So Olivier, please, would you begin with the case? Yes, so we'll discuss the case of a 50-year-old patient who has no past medical history. And he presented in May 2012 the first episode of alcoholic hepatitis. He received a steroid therapy and was a responder and stopped his uh, alcohol consumption. In spite of her improvement of liver function, he kept uh, refractory ascites and was referred in January 200, 20, uh, 213 
uh, after eight months of alcohol withdrawal. Uh, diuretic was stopped after one month because of severe hyponatremia, and they needed a paracentesis of seven to 10 liters every 10 days. At clinical examination, we see 10 sasades, poor nutritional null status, and umbilical hernia. Biological data are shown. We can see a mild hepatic insufficiency with a INR at 1.6, bilirubin at 60 micromol per liter, and a mild elevation of creatinine. There is also a hyponatremia. Uh, he has a cirrhosis, a child puke score C11, and a male score at 18. The CD scan showed an atrophic liver with a large ascites, planomegaly, and portosystemic shunts. So this patient had the severe alcoholic hepatitis. He was treated with corticosteroids. He abstained for, from alcohol for six months and still is very, in very poor shape. So now what about the treatment? Of course, paracentesis is the first choice. It's easy. It's effective very quickly. There is no contraindication, but of course, they should frequently be repeated every weak, often. There are some complications such as bleeding, leakage, strangulation, or paracentesis-induced circulatory dysfunction with hypovolemia and renal dysfunction, and finally, it remains a palliative option. TIPS is an option in selected patients. It can be effective, and clearly, it improves renal function, nutritional status, and quality of life. However, TIPS is not always feasible. It has some complications such as bleeding during the procedure or encephalopathy in the long term. And there are some contraindications such as encephalopathy and uh, liver insufficiency mild uh, over 18. And again, TIPS is only a palliative treatment. So then, based on this background, what did the unit propose to the patient, Olivier? So because the uh, male score was uh, over 18, we proposed a liver transplant and perform a pre-transplant evaluation. Abdominal imaging showed no HCC and no vascular abnormalities. And on cardiopulmonary evaluation, lungs were normal on CT scan and echocardiography showed a preserved ejection function and no systolic pulmonary hypertension. Kidney evaluation consisted on urinary analysis with normal urinary sediment, no proteinuria, and kidneys were normal on sonography. Uh, creatinine clearance was estimated by MDRD4 equation and find uh, 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 estimated clearance at 55 millilitres meter. We performed a uraxial clearance and had a measured GFR at 38 millilitres per minute. So contrary to what we could expect from a serum creatinine level, which was within the broad range of normal values, this patient appears to have a very severe liver disease, uh, which we don't know is, whether it is chronic or acute. It seems to be chronic. Yes. Uh, firstly, the evaluation of kidney function is crucial in candidates for liver transplantation. As everybody knows, Fun renal function is a risk factor of mortality in cirrhosis, and we know that post-transplant renal dysfunction has an impact on post-transplant outcome. Pre-transplant kidney dysfunction is a major determinant of post-transplant kidney dysfunction, and finally, combined liver and kidney transplantation, CLKT, in patients with both end-stage cirrhosis and end-stage kidney disease can offer excellent results in selected candidates similar to those observed in uh, liver transplantation alone. Creatinine has been considered for many years as uh, the reference for the evaluation of renal function, but it's definitely a poor marker of renal function. Because of several reasons, a decreased production of creatine and creatinine due to liver insufficiency and denutrition, and because of falsely low levels of serum creatinine due to dilution induced by uh, edema and ascites. 
In the general population, several creatinine-derived equations have been proposed and have been evaluated in patients with cirrhosis. And you can see here on this table, on your uh, left, the equation, and on your right, the difference between calculated GFR by the equation and measured GFR corresponding in your exal clearance in a large population of more than 300 cirrhotic patients. And as you can see, Cockroft, MDRD4, and CKDAPI overestimates true GFR by 25, 16, and 9 milliliter per minute in average. And by contrast, MDRD6 underestimates the true GFR by 9 milliliter per, per, min, per minute in average. So clearly, if liver transplantation is considered, it is better to use an equation that underestimates the true GFR rather than overestimates, since it avoids overlooking severe renal disease who should indicate combined liver and kidney transplantation. So these patients are uh, an advanced uh, chronic liver disease, uh, kidney disease. And so what was your, your decision regarding uh, the indications for liver transplantation or combined liver and kidney transplantation? So because the uh, altered GFR, we performed the kidney biopsy. Uh, on the left side, we have a normal kidney biopsy with the glomerulus and the tubules. On the right side, it's our patient uh, biopsy showing uh, patchy areas of uh, interstitial uh, fibrosis and uh, tubules, some are enlarged with a flattened epithelium. We can see in the middle uh, uh, fibrotic uh, glomerulus and another glomerulus on the top you have hypercellularity. Uh, there is uh, mesenchial deposits of IgA. So the final diagnosis was a membranous glomerular nephritis with IgA deposits and chronic tubular interstitial nephritis. So this patient had initially a severe acute alcoholic hepatitis. Mm -hmm. Probably we understand better the refractory ascites because there was a chronic underlying liver disease, uh, kidney disease. And then the question is, is it by chance that this patient got this uh, disease or is there a possible link between the liver disease and this chronic kidney disease? So everybody knows classical and typical uh, causes of specific kidney disease is associated with cirrhosis such as IgA nephropathy and due to alcohol or viral associated glomerulonephropathies. But we should not forget that in candidates for liver transplantation, there are many causes of kidney disease, non-specific kidney uh, lesions, because of advanced age, over 60 or more, and most um, and most and most often, a metabolic syndrome with overweight, hypertension, and diabetes. While on the waiting list, we perform uh, imaging every uh, three months, and a portal vein thrombosis uh, was suspected on uh, sonography, so we completed by a CD scan. As you can see on this CT scan, we have uh, thrombus in the main portal vein, affecting about two-thirds of the trunk, but without any extension uh, to the inferior mesenteric vein, and the two uh, intrahepatic veins uh, are patent. So, this is a bad news. <laughs> <laughs> so does it uh, contraindicate liver transplant? Does it make liver transplantation, which was our project, impossible? No, of course, no, but <laughs> not yet. So, to conclude some take-home messages, a liver transplantation is the best current treatment in patients with refractory ascites, especially in those with male score over 15. The evaluation of kidney function is crucial in candidates for liver transplantation to decide between liver transplant alone or combined liver and kidney transplantation. 
The optimal assessment is based on geoform measurement using clearance or if an unavailable MDRD6 equation. And finally, portal vein uh, thrombosis is common in patients awaiting for liver transplantation and must be screened for. Anticoagulation is recommended to facilitate liver transplant procedure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this uh, grand round session on uh, the complications of cirrhosis. Uh, we hope that you will take benefit of it. Thank you very much.